So continuing with uh, part three of auto rotations, there's a, about three concepts we need to revisit here real quickly. And the first of which is the fact that once you allow a blade or a wing to stall, the amount of drag produced uh, by that stalled wing or blade is exponentially much greater, much, much greater amount of drag compared to the amount of drag produced by that same wing or blade when it's producing lift in the non-stalled configuration, I guess you could say. So the amount of drag produced by a wing making lift is a paltry amount of drag compared to the amount of, of drag once that wing or blade stalls, right? The second one we need to talk about is that as you increase the airspeed across a lifting surface, as you double the airspeed across a lifting surface, the amount of lift does not double, it actually quadruples. So it's an exponential increase in lift as we increase the amount of airflow or airspeed across that lifting surface. As we decrease the amount of airspeed across that lifting surface, it's also an exponential decrease in that if we were to have the amount of airspeed across that wing, then the amount of lift would not go down by half, it would actually go all the way down to one-fourth the original amount of lift. All right? So those two concepts are going to come into play here when we're talking about uh, what happens in auto rotation. And then the third thing we need to talk about, and this is the one thing you really need to remember to be a helicopter pilot, all right? and that is if you raise the collective in an auto rotation, if you raise the collective up, the blade RPM will slow down. All right? And if you lower the collective during an auto rotation, the blade RPM will speed up. All right? That's what you really need to know to be able to fly a helicopter. I raise the collective, it slows down. I lower the collective, it speeds back up. Now let's talk about why now. Okay, so you guys remember this little uh, diagram here sketch that shows the stalled region of the blade. This is a blade in vertical auto rotation. We have the stalled region of the blade here. We have the driving region of the blade that actually produces the force that makes the blade rotate. And then we have the driven region here of the blade on the outer part. Both the driven region and the stalled region serve to slow the blade rotation down. The driving region, if we were to make it bigger, uh, then it tends to speed the blade uh, rotation rate up, right? And there's some vector diagrams over here, and they look very complicated, but all it's very simple. What, what happens here, the amount of lift uh, produced is less uh, out here on the outside of the blade compared to the amount of drag. Remember, our lift-to-drag ratio is a little crappier out here on the end. So that the total aerodynamic force is actually slightly aft, of the axis of rotation of the blades, right? And that tends to slow the blade rotation down. If you look here on section C here at the uh, driving region, because the amount of drag compared to the amount of lift we get is so much smaller then, the uh, total aerodynamic force is actually slightly ahead of the axis of rotation of the blades, and that tends to speed the blades up, right? And then finally, last and certainly not least, the, the stalled region here, um, as you know, because the amount of drag produced in the stalled region is exponentially greater than the amount of drag produced out here where the blades are actually producing lift, then that tends to very rapidly also produces a decrease in blade RPM. Right? All right. So what happens when we lift the collective on the on the uh, helicopter during an auto rotation? But when we raise the collective up on during that auto rotation, then the amount of angle of attack of these blades is going to increase, right? So we increase the angle of attack across the entire length of the blade. And what that does, it shifts all three of these regions outward on the blade, right? So the driven region out here will actually get a bit smaller. That would tend to speed the blade up a little. The driving region would actually shift out farther out on the rotor blade. And that too would actually tend to speed the blade up because we're actually shifting the driving region out onto a section of the blade that's moving faster, has a greater rotational speed. So that would also tend to speed the blade up somewhat. However, the stalled region here with a magnitude of drag that is exponentially greater than the other two sections here, since it's getting larger as well, the amount of drag increase outweighs the amount of speeding up of the blade here with uh, these two sections and the blade slows down, all right? So as we raise the collective up, 
the blade rotation speed slows down, right? The other thing that's happening at that same time, let's say that I'm in a vertical auto rotation and I slowly sneak up my collective until I drive my rotor RPM down to 90%, from 100% down to 90%. The amount of lift produced, remember, as we increase or decrease the amount of airflow or airspeed across the lifting surface, the increase or decrease is exponential. We decrease the speed down to 90%. And so our blades are only making roughly about 81% the amount of lift that they were producing at 100%. So what happens to our sink rate? The, the aircraft begins to sink even greater. When the aircraft sink rate increases, that large column of air that's coming up towards the blades tends to increase the angle of attack even more, right? And that shifts, again, all three of these regions back out towards the end of the blade even more. If I then was to continue coming up on my collective and I drive my rotor RPM down to a critical uh, rate of about 80% rotor RPM, the blades will actually stall. All right? And what happens is, again, as I'm, I'm increasing the angle of attack, I'm shifting these out, the stalled region is getting larger, that's slowing the blades down. And at the same time, as we're slowing the blades down, the amount of lift produced is increasing, the amount of sink rate is increasing. And, and at about 80% it becomes critical and the, all the great inflow of air up through the rotor disc then it's sort of self-sustaining and this as, as it more comes up the more it slows down and the greater the stalled region becomes until the blades literally will stop. When you went to Robinson Safety School back in the day they used to actually show you a video of a guy in an R22 that lost the engine in an R22 due to car bice and uh, and seemingly never lowered the collective. The blade RPM decayed, he went all the way to a blade stall, and they had a video, there was a guy just happened to get a video of it, where the aircraft is literally just coming straight down out of the sky. Right? So I don't think they show you that video anymore. But that's what can happen. If the, if the engine quits, and you did nothing, if you never lowered your collective down, to maintain blade RPM, once your blade RPM decays less to less than 80%, you're going to get a blade stall and you're going to die. All right, you have got to get the collective down. In the auto, if the engine quits, you got to get that collective down. And once you hit 80%, and it's actually 80% plus 1% per thousand feet, is the blade RPM where a blade stall would occur. All right, and we'll talk about more about why the, the uh, blades will actually stall at a higher blade RPM as you go up in altitude. Again, the roughly the uh, rule of thumb is 80% plus 1% per thousand feet increase in altitude.